Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, it is uh, about three after, so um, Greta, whenever you're ready, we can go ahead and get started. All right, well, thank you, Catherine. And uh, thank you all for joining us for our fourth virtual lunch and learn discussion. Uh, I think these have been so informative and uh, I can't thank everyone for uh, joining us for these. Uh, it is so great to engage with other women and on the topics that Catherine has put together. So thank you, Catherine. Um, my name is Greta Pui and I am the co-chair for Women United. This month, we are thrilled to welcome Lexi Savage and our very own United Way of Central Florida President and CEO, Christina Kreiser Jackson. But before I uh, hand it off to these ladies, I just want to introduce them um, shortly. So um, Lexi Savage is the Regional Engagement Director for the Southeastern United States with United Way Worldwide. In her role, she supports 255 United Ways in nine states, helping them access resources and best practices to achieve their mission. Prior to her position with United Way Worldwide, Lexi was the Senior Vice President of Communications and Resource Development to the United Way of Palm Beach County for eight years. There, she was responsible for overseeing workplace fundraising, marketing, public relations, and special events. Welcome, Lexi. Christina, a graduate of the University of Florida, has dedicated her life to nonprofit work. With a master's degree in family, youth, and community sciences, Christina is passionate about improving lives and strengthening our community. Starting her career at United Way Worldwide, Christina has served our Central Florida community now for over a decade. She is a member of the Junior League of Greater Lakeland and the Association of Fundraising Professional Florida Caucus. Christina is also a graduate of the United Way Worldwide Advanced Leadership Program. So without further ado, I'll hand it off to the ladies. And if anyone has any question throughout today's call, we will allow time at the end of the call for questions. And feel free to use the uh, chat box. It's a great way to stay engaged with the group. So from there, I'll pass it on. Good afternoon, Thanks. everyone. So we are really excited um, to have United Way Worldwide here today. As Greta mentioned, your Women United Committee has worked really hard to provide you all um, with updates in United Way's work and how COVID-19 has impacted us, how it's impacted our partner agencies, and it's impacted our volunteers that are serving. Um, so today was a little bit of a switcheroo. Um, we wanted to change it up a little bit and include our United Way worldwide um, leads. And we are very grateful to have Lexi Savage here today. Um, we wanted to speak to um, something that many don't understand about United Way, but which also makes us, um, or kind of gives us the strength um, that we have to serve, which is we are truly, truly locally governed, um, which means we have our own board, uh, many of which our um, board members are on this call today. We have representatives from public supermarkets, Geico, Mosaic, throughout the faith-based leaders, um, the government leaders, we have the education system, health department, all involved with our organization. But in addition to that, being our local chapter and being locally governed, we also have the benefit of being part of the United Way Worldwide system. And I'll tell you that Lexi Savage, um, it's probably been about a year now, but with COVID time, it seems like it's um, been much longer or much shorter, depending on how um, you've been serving. But um, we have a very unique benefit that we belong to the system that provides us support, research, tools, marketing, and then also evaluates the trends. So United Way Worldwide does serve as a leader among the nonprofit industry and among our nonprofit sector in providing that information. So we're so grateful to have Lexi Savage here today to do a state of United Way and to provide us with some input and observations and research that they are providing um, from our United Way Worldwide partnership. Thank you so much, Christina, and thank you all for letting me join you today. It is my honor. Um, so as Christina and Greta mentioned, I'm with United Way Worldwide. I'm the Regional Engagement Director. I've been in the position for, yes, a year that also feels like a lifetime. <laughs> but has flown by all at once. And so it's certainly been an interesting year to start this new position. Um, but it's such a, a privilege for me to be part of such an important network of nonprofit organizations that create global change. And as Christina mentioned, it is critical 
that the local United Way serve and support their communities. We can't possibly exist without them. That's what United Way is all about. But I always think it's really cool to step back and take a look at this map and these statistics and to remember that we are a part of a global network that is driving change, especially during this last year that's been challenging for individuals and families all over the world. Um, there are more than 41 um, countries that have United Ways. We have 1,800 across the globe and close to 1,100 of those are right here in the United States. We generate um, close to $4.8 billion um, driving Again, just tremendous change when our communities need us the most. More than 2.9 volunteers, that includes all of you on this call today, and um, 8.1 million donors worldwide. Um, and of course, everywhere that United Way exists, one thing remains the same. We are changing lives and communities through the caring power of volunteers, donors, corporate, across every sector. So again, I just think it's really cool to see and it gives some great perspective. Um, before I go on, I just want to say, please feel free to ask questions. Um, Catherine, I'm not sure what your typical format is, but um, I welcome unmuting and asking questions or if you prefer to put them in the chat, whatever you all prefer. And I know Christina and I are going to be um, chatting as well. So Christina, is there anything that you wanted to add to this sort of global perspective before we move on? No, I think you covered it. I know one of the big conversations when we're talking about how much we've raised um, nationwide and worldwide is been what's the state of the workplace campaign. Um, and during this COVID scenario, um, we have seen um, significant changes in the workplace campaign, but donors that are willing to give more and invest more into initiatives that they care about the most. Um, and that's been a, an adjustment for our local United Way as well. Our focus areas are education, income, and health, and helping donors connect with the work that we're doing. So I know that Lexi's going to get a little bit more into that. Yeah, thank you. That's the perfect segue because, of course, coronavirus um, distracted us from our normal activities, and we needed to step up and respond in our communities quickly, get emergency services, food, basic needs out to those who needed it the most. Um, I know you all did a fantastic job with that and continue to serve your community through the distribution of the CARES funds and other important work that you're doing. Um, but again, just to share that global perspective, and since this slide was created, this was in September, I need to update this slide. We officially broke $1 billion raised by United Way globally to support COVID relief efforts. Um, more than 644 million of that was right here in the United States. International partners raised more than 306 million and United Way Worldwide raised close to 50 million. Again, we have now exceeded the $1 billion mark, which is tremendous. And this really speaks to the fact that communities still turn to United Way as they trust United Way uh, during difficult times. They know that we will be there for them. We will serve our community. And I know it's like the most overused word of 2020, but we were able to pivot. We were able to go from in-person workplace campaigns to online workplace campaigns. We were able to go right into digital fundraising without skipping a beat. And I think, you know, that's a testament to the leadership of every United Way, Christina, your team, the great work that you all did to be able to make that switch and serve our community's most urgent needs. Um, and that really elevates the brand, our visibility um, in our communities and globally, <clears throat> excuse me. So I think it's an important thing to remember as we're looking ahead as how can we continue to leverage that? How can we continue to remind the community that we show up for them when they need us the most? Even if, if and when, as <laughs> life starts to return to normal, how can we continue to show up and demonstrate that value? Um, and you will, you will see that the value comes from our volunteers, um, from groups like Women United, um, where again, I just want to show you are a part of this global network 
there are more than 70,000 Women United leaders, members across 165 communities globally that have raised and invested more than $1.5 billion. And I just think since 2002, and I just think that that is incredible. You should all pat yourselves on the back for being a part of something that's so awesome and important. Um, so thank you for, for everything that you do. And I thought maybe now would be a good space. Christina, do you want to, um, you know, dive in deeper, have some questions? Is there anything that we'd like to chat about in Absolutely. more depth? Absolutely. And I think um, when we're talking about the success of fundraising, I think uh, we'd be remiss not to mention how grateful and honored that we are to have public supermarkets and public supermarkets charities as part of that fundraising effort. Um, Greta Dupuy, who is our lead for the local community um, for the associate fundraising, and then also Kelly Williams Puccio as a lead for public supermarkets charities. Um, the associates giving this, this past year was phenomenal and was remarkable. And throughout the seven state footprint um, that they work in, it really inspires local communities. So while we're talking about COVID-19 in the state of United Way, um, I think we'd be remiss not to recognize how much our local leader inspires others to give and get involved in a big way. Um, so we are very excited to announce that they were the top most charitable um, donor to the local communities throughout the United Way network. Yes. So Lexi, there's a lot of- I, I just want to note, I'm wearing my Publix green today. We love Publix. And yes, number one campaign, workplace giving campaign in the United States we truly could not do what we do as a network if it wasn't for the support of Publix in every community that they serve. So we are eternally grateful and we love Publix. So Lexi, we've talked about the local United Ways, the strength of being um, locally governed um, and having that local community mindset. We've talked about the strength in numbers as far as looking at United Way worldwide, the number of local United Ways um, and the reach that um, United Way has. We've talked about also briefly um, Women United and the strong force um, that women leaders are taking in the United Way network. How would you say um, United Way Worldwide as a system has been impacted negatively um, and maybe there's some positive ways by COVID-19 and coronavirus? Absolutely. It's a great, a great question. And I think, you know, every organization has been impacted by coronavirus. Um, the way that we work, the way that we, that we communicate with each other, everything has shifted so dramatically. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, I think the positive part of it is that we were able to respond very quickly. We were there for our communities. We showed up. Our fundraising efforts, as you saw on the last slide, were tremendous. Um, and so I think those are all things that, that are positives that we can continue to build on as we move forward and as we look at long-term recovery and what our community needs are going to look like. Um, of course, one of the biggest impacts on the negative side of things that we know is that workplace campaigns have been impacted. Um, overall, the, the global corporate partnership team is projecting um, about a 10 to 11% decrease. Um, typically, you know, in the last year, I think we saw about a 5% decrease in workplace campaigns overall. So that's about double. Um, of course, this is based on data that we have from so many of those companies that we know had furloughed employees, had to close down your neighbors in Orlando, deeply impacted by Disney, things along those lines. Um, so always conservative when we're projecting what that's going to look like, but, and cautious, um, but hoping that we will continue to, to build on that and make up for it in other ways. And I think, again, the COVID funds are a great example of that. Often you might have a company that, that gave less through their workplace giving campaign because the employees couldn't, or they were, you know, minimum people actually working at the time, but they were able to give a corporate gift to support our work in that area. So I think it also 
was a good catalyst for us to continue to re-examine how we, how we work with our corporate partners, how we work with our communities. Um, I think another area where we've probably seen um, a significant amount of growth is from individual donors and online giving. We know prior to coronavirus, the statistic was that about 24% of all philanthropic giving happened from a mobile phone. So I can only imagine that that's going to increase dramatically because of this past year. So I think it's, it was a good catalyst for the work that we're already doing in a digital space. And how can we, again, continue to meet our donors where they are, make sure that they're seeing us when they're, you know, scrolling through their various feeds. Um, and it, and it really, I think, validated a lot of the work that we're already doing in this space and that you all um, are a part of. I love that you said <laughs> meeting our donors where they are and uh, repeated many times intention is so important right now. So yes, we know what we do. We support through education, income and health, but how can we take it that next step and help our volunteers and our donors find their place with our partner agencies and the work that they're doing um, and feel um, a sense of fulfillment, but also knowing that they're giving back because our partners do such a great job of producing that outcome measurement. And one of the great ways that our volunteers and our donors can do that is through our affinity groups. So can you provide us a few examples of what you've seen um, through other local United Ways and their partnerships um, with Women United or their other affinity groups um, and some examples that you've seen that have really um, been best practices or great examples that we could follow in our local community. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's one of the great parts too about United Ways. We're so collaborative, right? And always looking for different ways that we can partner, bring the community together around our work. Um, and one of the best ways to do that truly is through your members, Women United, your other affinity groups, Young Professionals, Link. Um, because they're our ambassadors, right? They are the, the face of our organization. They, they make us look good out in the community. They represent all the different businesses and sectors that we partner with on a regular basis. Um, and so some of these great partnerships that I've seen are some, um, even here in the state of Florida, with Women United coming together. And I think if you were interested, it would definitely be something um, that I could help get you connected to, to participate in in the future. Um, which was with Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County. They all partnered to host a Women United Read Across America Day, which is a day that happens anyway. And so they came together as a group. They planned. They planned what it would look like. They did a press release around it, shared social media, shared graphics, really a great collaborative effort. Um, and then it, on the day in each of their respective communities, they volunteered with a partner agency to read to children in their areas, but they were posting everything together. They had shared media coverage and they were using the same hashtag. So that afterwards they could track their impression numbers. So of course, to have three United Ways doing this together, you end up with a much greater impact and more impression numbers than doing it alone. And I think it also sends a great message to our donors that we do work together, right? We don't want donors that, you know, for example, uh, um, someone that works for Publix and they maybe leave Florida and go to South Carolina or Georgia. We want to make sure that they're having a really great experience wherever they are with whatever United Way they're working with. And I think these collaborations also really help facilitate that and helps us show up as that, that one network that we're always striving to. Um, another great example of sort of that cross-pollination or, or partnership is within the affinity groups, um, an opportunity for mentoring from the, the Tocqueville donors, Women United, or if you have that level of Women United Tocqueville donors, um, that sort of mentorship with Link or Young Professionals, doing some events together. Um, in my time in Palm Beach County, we actually Notice that our Tocqueville Society luncheons, while they were really great, it was the same folks showing up. Um, we wanted to expand the group and liven things up a little bit. And so we actually opened it up and made it 
Women United, Emerging Leaders, and Tocqueville Society luncheons together. And like the most amazing thing happened. It just sort of naturally morphed into this, this mentoring partnership where the young professionals were excited to be in the room with many of these Tocqueville donors who were CEOs at our, at our major companies in the area. They were excited to be able to interact with our Women United leaders who were these powerful women that maybe they never really had the chance to chat with. And then here they all were in the same room together with the opportunity to learn from each other. And it, always with the perspective of philanthropy, how do you give back and how is giving back played a part in your career and your career development over time? And so it was a great way for those CEOs and higher level um, leadership members of our Tocqueville and Women United to share with some of the younger professionals um, not only their career path, but the role that their personal philanthropy and volunteerism played along the way. Um, and it really was just a, a, a very cool opportunity to have it, individuals who wouldn't normally have the opportunity to interact in the same room together. That's really neat. And we have some impressive women community leaders um, on this call, some representing some of our partner agencies, um, certainly board members, volunteers, et cetera. What best practices have you seen through the network um, that would help those individuals expand women in those leadership roles or their involvement? Um, well, I definitely, from, from both the perspective of helping to expand the Women United group and continue to grow your members, but to also help those members, you know, facilitate their own personal growth, um, Again, I think it's that it's that opportunity to kind of connect the dots with the work that United Way does in the community with some of the partner agencies um, and with the Women United members. So, for example, I can't remember the exact terminology for it, um, but helping tapping into some of your partner agencies and helping them with some of their core business needs where they really need um, some support. Um, so for example, identifying some of your, your women leaders who would be interested in doing something like that. And what are their, <clears throat> excuse me, areas of focus and skill sets where then maybe they can have the opportunity to connect with some of your partner agencies and help them with IT and data, their financial back of house, their HR experience, marketing and public relations, um, and really aligning those skill sets with the needs of partner agencies and doing some program work in that area because it's it's sort of that mentorship and volunteerism piece. Um, it's allowing your Women United members um, to see in really behind the scenes of a local nonprofit and how they work and helping them, but in turn also supporting them. It's a, uh, of course a great thing to add to your resume and a great way to give back to the community. And also, a good recruiting opportunity for new Women United members. And especially if you were to, you know, launch an initiative like that, or it's a good thing to tell your friends, here's what we're doing. I think you would really like to join in this. Not only do we have great networking events, but we're also helping the nonprofit community with their capacity building. Um, I think that, you know, that's, that's a great example of, of something I've seen in a few different communities where it really just, I, I feel like connects all the dots of the United Way's work too. We appreciate that. So before we go to the group and ask for questions, Lexi, is there anything else that you'd like to cover on the state of United Way worldwide, the local United Ways or Women United and growth opportunities in general? I just would like to first thank you all so much for your continued support of United Way. Um, Keep, keep showing up, keep doing what you're doing. Um, Christina and her team obviously are doing incredible work right here in your community. So I think anything that we can do to continue to grow um, the Women United group and to grow those collaborations across the state and beyond, um, it, it's really beneficial for, for your United Way for that branding opportunity, but it's also great to just to elevate the Women United group. Um, and so I'll continue to keep you informed of opportunities as well, or when we hear of 
um, other local United ways that are doing interesting new things. I will definitely um, keep you in the loop with that too, but I really just appreciate everything that, that you all do. And thank you for letting me join. And I'm happy to answer any questions or chat about anything. So any questions from the group? We did have a couple um, people reiterate how much we all love Publix and how much they rock. So thank you, Kay Fields and Cheryl Brown. I have a lot of individual questions. So one question that we get quite a bit is I'll stop trying. one of the questions that we get quite a bit is our um, database and our CRM platform that we currently use. We're really excited. I know a lot of our partners, I'm looking to some of our partner agencies are really excited about this new platform that we're going to be using. Can you speak to a little bit about that and why it was so necessary for United Way as a system to move towards um, a shared platform? Absolutely. Um, it's, it's really cool work. And as someone who personally used Andar for years, <laughs> I'm very excited for the network to have this opportunity. Um, it was important on many levels. And I think as I referenced earlier, when coronavirus hit, it really drove home that a lot of the work that we were doing in the last year, two years to bring some of this technology and, and digital interfaces forward um, was really critical because while, while your United Way is really strong in this area and we're able to, to pick up and do what needed to be done, um, even just out of my 255 United Ways in the Southeast region alone, there were many who really struggled. They weren't ready. Their CRM database is on a server, not on a cloud platform. They didn't know how to make that change to do a digital campaign or, you know, like we say, to meet their donors where they were. They just couldn't do it. They didn't know how to communicate. And so it, it became really, really challenging for those United Ways, which just showed even more that these, these types of shared, the shared CRM platform um, will allow United Ways to have a better relationship with their donors to communicate with them in the ways that they want to be communicated with. So to really do that targeted marketing outreach to, to focus on their donor interest. So maybe they're not getting a long newsletter that has everything in it and there's only one thing that's interested in them, but they're able to get communications based on what they give to and what they're interested in. And so if, if you know that they, they support your work in early childhood education and they, um, you know, might be a good candidate for Women United, you can make sure that you're sending them the right communications and that you're tracking their giving in a better way. But then also on the back end of things, it's much more user friendly. It's very nice to look at, which Andar is not. <laughs> um, and it's a great way to pull um, reports and visuals. And we all know, um, you know, everyone would much rather look at like a nice chart and visual representation than, you know, a long page of reporting and data. And so I think that's another really great part of it. It is built on a Salesforce platform. So it really has all the bells and whistles. Everything's beautifully presented. You can pull reports and look at dashboards and um, see how your fundraising efforts are tracking and, and slice it and dice it so many different ways um, where I feel like we really haven't always had the capability to do that. But then also when we talk about individuals moving to different United Ways across the network, um, it, it allows them to have a much more consistent donor experience and a much more well-rounded donor experience so that you could then see if, you know, Samantha from New York relocates to Florida you will be able to see her records. You will be able to see how she gave, that she was a Women United member, that she supported mentoring initiatives, that she volunteered you know, four times a year at these various types of events. So that way, when you reach out, you already know her interests. Whereas now, we're lucky if we find out that someone has relocated to our community that did support a United Way. You have to track down that United Way, hope that someone will answer your call, and then tell you all the different ways in which this donor participated, if they even have record of it. So, you know, the dream at all of the, the mid to large size United Ways will be using the same shared platform um, and be able to really 
just have give the donors a much better experience, make sure that we're acknowledging them in real time um, and, and marketing to them based on their interests. And we also, we talk a lot about awesome donor experiences, but also awesome volunteer experiences with so many nonprofits represented on this call. We know that volunteers and volunteer hours are crucial. They're an important resource for all of our nonprofits. So another um, item that this shared platform will provide are volunteer opportunities, um, but also the opportunities. So for example, if you're Greta and you're Lakeland and you're maybe traveling in South Carolina and she gets, because we all know that Greta likes to volunteer, she wants to go volunteer, she'll be able to, able to go on that platform and find volunteer projects and opportunities in that community. So exactly. Um, opportunity to grow that. Exactly. Um, I see a question in the chat here about agency campaigns. Christina, do you want to um, jump to that? So we have from Kay Fields, do you have any suggestions on how agency partners can energize their agency campaign to get 100% participation? So from my personal experience, um, we had a campaign here in Palm Beach County that actually was in our top 20 campaigns, which to me is just astounding. They actually were right there. I think they actually gave a little bit more than our United Way team. Like they were up there, they were one of our, our top supporters, which is incredible. Um, and we always appreciate that the agencies give back and, and know the value of, of United Way. And I th always think that the agency campaigns really demonstrate that value. Um, and whether it's a high giving amount or just 100% participation or as high as participation as you can have, um, I think it speaks to the agency's belief in the value of United Way and what it brings to the community and what it brings to their organization to have that, that support. Um, and it doesn't have to be a top 20 campaign, but just to show the strength of that partnership and really think... I. And I know things are very different this year because we can't do in-person events and things along those lines. But the one that we had here that was the most successful was the, the CEO was extremely passionate about United Way, um, energized the employees around it, and they were really able to share the value. And they focused a lot on um, the clients that were served because of the support of United Way and pulling out those stories. Um, because of course, the clients that you serve are the, the heart of your organization and why you do the work that you do. And they really tried to connect the United Way funding of certain programs to the success of um, some client stories, having the clients come back and talk about their experience, their experience with the organization, um, especially those that would come and speak at United Way campaigns as well, representing the organization, because I feel like they really fully understood sort of that, that connection and how United Way and agencies work together. So sharing that, and then we always showed up to their events um, as much as we possibly could, make sure that we spoke and spoke about the value of the relationship as well. Um, you know, it's really a, a, a two-way street. Um, and so I think that it's been, you know, in that regard, it was really great to just appreciate each other and appreciate the value um, and the partnership and really focus on that as a part of the campaign. But then also to just make it as fun as possible, because e even, in, even in these times where we're doing things virtually, um, there are interesting ways to engage in campaign. I happen to know someone who recently um, got a pie in the face right on camera <laughs> in front of everyone. So I think the willingness to, to like just be silly and have some fun for good always helps as well. Um, and I think we all know everyone always seems to want to give someone a pie in the face. <laughs> but that's still well received over camera. Um, and the, the CEO was willing to do that and, and step up for their fundraising campaign for United Way. And I think they also just make it really fun and they don't make it about the money to your question about participation. They really make it about whether you give $1, $5 or $100. We just want you to demonstrate your commitment to this, to this partnership. And I think just really helping them understand um, the, the value of that because sometimes the you know, senior level 
team members might understand that value more than the full staff does. So I think just helping to make sure that everyone understands what, what the partnership means. Lexi, what has been the most difficult or surprising challenge local United Ways or United Way Worldwide has faced during COVID-19? Want me to pick one? <laughs> um, well, I think for some, for some United Ways, um, like I mentioned earlier, that just were not equipped to go digital. They were not ready to do things virtually. Um, that was really one of the biggest challenges. And so for us at United Way Worldwide, we rolled out very swiftly um, a lot of supports to help United Ways that, that couldn't do it. So for example, um, they didn't have the capacity, the ability to create a COVID a fundraising page on their website. So we worked with a partner to build micro sites for local United Ways so that they would have a place to direct people to so that they wouldn't have that missed opportunity. Um, there were some small United Ways that just kind of shut down and didn't participate and didn't stand up COVID funds. Um, and I just think that that's such a huge missed opportunity because some of the smaller United Ways, and when I say smaller United Ways, I mean, we have some that raise, you know, $250,000 a year, but for their community, it's still impactful and it's still making a difference. Um, and we had one of those small United Ways receive the largest gift they've ever received in the history of their organization. Um, and they had no idea how to handle it. And so thankfully they were able to reach out to us and we were able to give them some, some support on how to steward a donor, how to communicate, make sure you're acknowledging them properly. Um, and how to make sure that that donor that gave this tremendous gift actually remained on as a donor and they could use it then to build on and to become stronger and to grow their United Way. Um, but I would say definitely the, the biggest pressure too is, um, and I see somebody's putting in the chat now about the pressure being on women. Um, United Way is like many nonprofits are have a lot of women in leadership roles, a lot of female CEOs, which, yeah, heck yes. But also at the same time, you know, the burden of distance learning and childcare. And if you're if you weren't different communities were experiencing it differently. But there was definitely a certain period of time there where everyone had their kids home. Um, and dealing with it. But I think it also, while as challenging as that is, I think it allowed us to relax a little bit and to see each other as more human and to understand and relate on a different level. So I think that that also really helped deepen some relationships, whether it was from United Way to United Way, internally at United Way Worldwide to say, you know what, it's okay if your baby's crying. It's cool if your cat walks past the video right now or if your dog is barking in the background because like we all have homes and personal lives and, and we get it. And, and that part, I think it just made us all a little bit more human and able to connect on a deeper level. And so I do feel like there are certain things that have come out of this that I hope continue. Um, like I don't know about you, Christina, but I know for, for a lot of us, we were able to meet with more people than ever because of zoom and like, yes, zoom fatigue is real. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but just to be able to like, maybe you're getting CEO calls that you struggled to get before because it's so much easier just to click on to zoom than to drive 30 minutes and set up and schedule. Um, and so I think we've seen some benefits around that as well. But again, just the, the challenge being for those that were not equipped to have technology. They weren't set up for it. It was, it was probably the biggest struggle for those United Ways. Um, but again, demonstrated why we need to continue doing this work and bring all the United Ways along with us because we need all of them to succeed for our network to continue to succeed and remain relevant. And for those that are calling in, um, Trinity had asked, the pressures of COVID are falling hard on women, generally with four times the number of women than men leaving the workforce. Are you seeing an impact on the United Way um, workforce? And so that's what Lexi was responding to. So thank you, Lexi. And here locally, um, it has definitely been challenging for all of our family members and all of our staff um, to um, determine how they work remotely how they take care of childcare in, in different ways, schools closing or opening, 
Um, so it's definitely, there's definitely been additional pressures for sure, um, but we've been able to keep all of our staff on board. And Cheryl was um, informing all of us, Zoom allows us to conduct business, but it is very hard to build relationships via Zoom from board to staff to clients. Uh, yes, amen. We all agree. We definitely agree. We were actually just going through a um, staff training this morning, and we talked about how grateful we are for this opportunity to invest in our staff. Um, but that will be interesting that once we get back into place and in person, how we'll be able to um, practice those skills that we just learned. So we agree with you. Definitely agree with you. And another, I think, support that United Way Worldwide is providing is some change management resources. Um, because again, that was something that we were really working on already before COVID, but that just sort of exacerbated our issues and our need for it and for us to be able to manage change both in our personal lives and organizationally. And so we really try to provide as many tools and resources as possible to local United Ways that can then always be shared out at any level with committee, board members, agencies, and so on. And some of the, the change management resources are really great and um, can be used in a virtual environment. I know Christina has two team members that were um, a part of that, the boot camp with our network champions and, and allowing, um, allowing them to participate, which is great as well, because then it really empowers your team and, and can, can really kind of cross pollinate across your team as well to help with, with what they've learned and help everyone kind of move along. Cause as we know too, change is really hard. And when you're sort of thrust into a situation where you have to change to keep up um, again, that's another place where I think we saw um, a lot of United ways struggling because traditionally, you know, we have not been great at change. We've, we've done a lot of the same things that's been our, our bread and butter for a very long time. And so having to continue to evolve a little slowly, um, I think it's, it's really helped sort of push everything ahead at a pace that we needed it to in spite of the challenges. So speaking of change, um, United Way Worldwide uh, deeply values diversity, equity, and inclusion. Can you speak to a couple of the new membership requirements that the local United Ways will be adhering to this year? Yes, absolutely. Um, and actually, I think the some final supporting documentation on that went out from United Way Worldwide today. Uh, but we do have a diversity, equity, and inclusion team. Um, and given many of the incidents in the last year, we really wanted to put a focus not just on diversity, equity, and inclusion, but on a stronger anti-racism stance. And so as a part of that, United Way Worldwide, the board leadership of United Way Worldwide and the U.S. Network rolled out three changes to the membership requirements for United Way. So um, just to give a little context, every United Way has certain things that they have to do and that they have to adhere to um, in order to maintain their United Way status as a United, as a United Way member, which includes the branding, the name, and all of those things. And so to have something um, very specific around anti-racism as a part of the membership requirements, I think speaks to the seriousness of it and how important it is to United Way as a network. And so the three changes are around um, bylaws, the board, board engagement participation and trainings, staff participation in equity trainings, um, and then also some requirements for funded agencies to at least have an anti-racism and equity statement and over time also participate in trainings and things along those lines. Um, it will all be supported. So we will be providing a lot of the trainings right from, from worldwide. Um, there's one coming up in April that board members can participate in or other committee members. And so we will provide the resources. It's not meant to be um, a burden. And again, you know, remembering that we have all different size United Ways with, with limited bandwidth for some of them, we're really trying to provide as many of the resources as possible to make it something that's attainable by every United Way. And so there'll be certain things that are required by um, June 
2021, and then some things that will be phased in over the, the coming years. Um, but it's really important work. And I'll share just as if it's okay with you and we have time, just as a personal example from some of the, the equity work that we did in Palm Beach County. Christina, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we had a staff member who really was um, an expert on diversity, equity, and inclusion. He had hosted many trainings. Um, we had some partners that we brought in who also facilitated some of those more challenging conversations. And we started to bring together some other funders and agencies and partners across the community. And it, it started out as DEI trainings for staff. Then we extended it to board. And then it was so well received and really popular. Um, and people were really just appreciative of the experience. We then ex expanded it and offered it to all of our partner agencies the partner agencies valued it and wanted to be able to bring more staff members. So then we extended it a little bit more. And then we realized that, you know, this could also be um, a revenue generating opportunity for United Way and some of our partners. And so, for example, the Urban League, um, United Way, a couple of other funders in, in sort of the health and human services area, as well as some of our corporate foundations, we all came together and hosted a, a DEI training series for local businesses. And I think it's something that can be offered in person or virtually, but it, it really became something that the community turned to us for. And it wasn't us saying we're the leader in this space. It was us saying what United Ways do best, we're bringing together the right people to host something like this. So we have some experts, but we're also bringing together the respected leaders in our community who do this work regularly. And we offered, I think it's going into its third year now, they did it virtually this year, um, these two-day DEI trainings with special speakers, panel discussions, um, and sponsorship opportunities. And it there were ticket sales, there were sponsorship opportunities. So it was a, it was a revenue generator. It wasn't a huge revenue generator, but it was enough, you know, to cover the costs and support the work. And then any funds raised could go into that equity work and allow us to continue um, showing up in that space for our community. And companies want to sponsor it because they want to be viewed as equitable. They want to make sure that they're doing this work. And so it's really a win-win for the community and was a great opportunity to engage um, in a new and, and meaningful way for our United Way, where we hadn't really had a strong presence in that space before. No, we appreciate that. We know that our tagline is Live United. We fight for the education, income, health, and health of everyone in our community. And I know it's been really important to our staff, um, to our board members, and, and especially our partner agencies, that we're not just saying that, we're not just putting on a shirt, but that we're actually involved in that work. So we're really excited about this movement that worldwide is making um, to focus and to target on that work. So thank you for explaining that, Lexi. And for all of our partner agencies, like Lexi mentioned, that was just launched today. So we will be getting you that information. Um, but to start off, it is, it's fairly easy to um, follow and to adhere to that. Um, it's just making sure that we're more targeted and focused and that we can all move forward in that capacity as well. Any other questions? So we did want to focus this on the overall United Way Worldwide impact and the state of United Way Worldwide. Um, but for those that haven't been able to join us on previous calls, um, Rod Crowley, our COO, was able to review the current work that United Way is doing in the community. And I just want to do a quick overview of that in case you do know someone that is in need or that is interested in knowing how United Way of Central Florida has had the honor to serve over what is now not just the last couple of months, but the last year. Um, so 211 is still available. It is a 24 seven re resource um, that provides referrals. You can either call 211 or you can text your zip code to 898-211. And our partners over at Heart of Florida United Way have referral agents that are there to serve you 24 seven, um, 365 days a year. We know with the holidays coming up that there's more need than ever. Um, so please feel free to utilize that phone number. The other is the Polk County CARES Act. Um, we are very grateful that our Polk County VOCC chose to partner with us 
and provided individual assistance for those that have been furloughed, laid off, or had a decrease in pay due to COVID-19. Over 5,000 individuals in our Polk County community were assisted and again, um, couldn't have done that without Polk County BOCC entrusting us with that program. In addition to that, they provided a, an assistance for nonprofits. That was our nonprofit COVID-19 relief and over $5 million went to assist programs and 501c3s in our community. Um, over 1.2 of that went to our partner agency. So we're very grateful that we we're able, again, as Lexi mentioned, the workplace campaign and traditional giving may have been down due to layoffs and changes in the workplace, but um, our gov government partners certainly stepped up to help us in that capacity. In addition, the Highlands County VOCC provided over $1.2 million in individual assistance, and we believe that may be reopening up again. Um, so we're grateful for that opportunity to serve our friends in Highlands County. In addition to that, um, our partners have been extremely resilient. Um, they have had to pivot and serve their clients in different capacities. We have been conducting quarterly surveys to evaluate the current success and the challenges of our partners. Um, but if you are an investor in United Way, whether it's as a volunteer in your time or you're a donor, if you're a $1 paycheck, like Lexi mentioned, or if you're a leadership giver, you can be extremely proud of our partners and the way that they've had um, to respond to COVID-19 and continue to serve. In addition to um, our 2019 workplace campaign, which was probably the longest um, workplace, workplace campaign that we have ever encountered, um, we had cuts in government funding. So we were, we were just about able to um, release that we have met our 2019 campaign goal. We are already in the 2020 campaign and that lasts until March 31st. Um, but beyond that, um, our partners really have had to adjust to changes in funding through individual corporations, government grants, um, and additional um, fundraising partners. I'd also like to say that um, we've been so grateful to be advocates and to be able to tell those stories and share the experiences that our community has um, encountered, that our partners have encountered, um, and in addition to that, new partnerships that we've been able to create, like the Polk County Unites, um, and I'm sorry, the Polk United Community Fund with um, Givewell Community Foundation and being able to provide PPE, education funding. Um, in addition to that, our partners at Publix and individual contributors, they have had us on the phone with blueberry farmers, milk farmers, um, finding different ways to support local business, our farmers, our um, citrus industry in new and meaningful ways has really just definitely been a, an interesting opportunity to serve, but there's been lots of changes this past year. Um, so I know that um, Rod had the um, privilege and honor to interview some of our um, partners and to discuss how they're serving in new capacities. Um, but we invite you to our, to our work and to um, enter in that capacity if you're interested to learn more. Please feel free to reach out to myself. Um, Catherine's on the call, Catherine Fitzwater. We have um, board members that are, are also involved today. And then I know Lexi always has an open door policy and she'd love to speak to you. Lexi always. <laughs> and Greta, anything from Women United? Going to unmute myself. <laughs> I uh, know we are going strong. And, you know, like I said, this was our fourth virtual lunch and learn. And I think these have been so great. I love to see new faces every time as well. Um, continue to spread the word ladies. And as soon as we have our 2021 agenda, we will let you know, uh, we want to continue to keep the ladies engaged. And if you have any ideas, or if you'd like to hear from somebody, please let Catherine, myself or Stephanie Colon know, we'd be more than happy to reach out to them. Um, us too, we're having to pivot, obviously, um, as we go into the year and look at um, creative uh, ways to, uh, to fundraise as a group, um, but we're all hands-on and looking forward to uh, continuing to be creative next year. Thank you both to uh, Lexi and to Christina. Thank you both for your leadership and what you do. Uh, what a year it has been, but it's, it's going to continue. I think everyone thinks that 2021 is going to be here and voila, everything is, <laughs> is, uh, is going to be different. But um, I think this is, this is the new way and I think you both are doing a great job. So thank you both for your leadership. Catherine, do you, do you have anything else before we wrap up? We have two minutes. That's it. Thank you all for joining us.
Thank you so much for the opportunity. It was great to meet all of you and hopefully I will get to see you in person one of these days. (laughs) Yes, hopefully very soon. Thank you again, Lexi, and thank you, Christina. Thank you. Have a great afternoon, ladies.